Let's go out the show then, my brother. Uh, we in the book of uh, Genesis chapter 2, verses one through uh, 7 through 9. When you get that, my brother, go ahead and read that. And the, Lord, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Uh -huh. And man became a living soul. Yes. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden mm -hmm. and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Okay, jump down to verse 20. Through 25. And Adam gave names to all cattle uh -huh. and to the fowl of the air yes. and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found and help me for uh -huh. him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept and took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in instead thereof. Uh -huh. And the rib, which the Lord God had taken from man, made he a woman. And brought her unto man. Go ahead. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman uh -huh. because she was taken out of man. Yes. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife. Wait a minute. No, they're supposed to stay together and live in mama house with mom and dad. That's right. But they That's husband and wife. He ain't getting his own house. He want to move in. Mom and daddy save some no, money, buy no, a big no. old house, get his nice car on mom and daddy. No. That ain't what it say, did it? No. He's supposed to leave his he, mom and his dad. He's supposed to leave his nest and start his own family. Stand up and be a man. Right. Stand up and be a man. Yes, you sir. took that man's daughter to marry her, not to move in with your family. No. <laughs> to move into your own house and start your own family. So yes, when you right. have kids, they'll know how the operation goes. Yes, they right. watch mom and dad and then they do the same thing because they mimic what they're taught. <clears throat> right? Go ahead, brother. And they shall be one flesh. One flesh, not multiple flesh. One. <laughs> so that kills multiple wives, don't it? Yes. You can't have multiple wives and then be one flesh. But it was a man and a woman. But it was right? a man and a woman right. to make one. Not a Go man. ahead. Not, not a, a man and a man. Not Steve and James. Yeah. Man and a not woman. Trisha and, and, and Janet. Not Adam. It and said Steve. a man and a woman. Not Adam and Steve. And yeah. he locked it down by giving us the DNA when he gave us the chromosome. Right? <clears throat> a woman got certain chromosome and a man got certain chromosome. They show you that they're men. So if, in case later they want to do some implants and mess around with the creation, you can't change your DNA. You sure? Yeah. Amen. You can't change them chromosomes. See, God got it on lock. But he know this man was going to go crazy and want to do all kind of stuff. So he has some check markers in there because he's a God that don't think like we think. Right? Where you at, brother? Verse 25. Go ahead. And they were both naked, uh -huh. the man and his wife. Oh, okay. They were not ashamed. And they weren't even ashamed because they didn't even know they were naked. That wasn't discovered until somebody had a conversation. But that's for another day. So we find out in Genesis 2, coming from verse 7, that God formed man from the dust of the ground. That's the earth, right? So we're going to start off with this man with his home coming as a mark, right? You put it on the thing right there. Thank you, brother. <laughs> so we're going to start off with one, right? Right. There's one that we see dealing with the dust of the ground and not up in heaven. Right. So if man came from that dirt, let's see what happens with that going dirt. Back to the dirt. Come on now, we're going to make it plain. <laughs> let's go on over to Genesis chapter 3, my brother. Yes, sir. Thank and we're going to pick it up at verses 15, Genesis 3 and 15. Where we going? Page 2. Yep. What, call the page again? Page 2. Page 2. Two. And you might want to read on what scriptures we're going to because that brother writing down the scriptures. Okay, you writing the scriptures down, my brother? Uh, some of them, I'm just like one flesh. I'm writing the okay. Uh, okay, main, got main you. stuff down here. You know? Okay. But you well, said 7 through 9 and you said 20 through 25. Yes, so, sir. And now we're doing. I'm just like yeah. getting on to that one, one from the dirt to the. Okay, well, we're still dealing with the yeah, dirt, right? Yeah. So Genesis 3 15 through 20. All right, Genesis chapter 3, uh -huh. verse 15. Go ahead. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, uh -huh. and between thy seed and her seed. Go ahead. It shall bruise thy head, 
and thou shalt bruise his heel. Go ahead. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. Uh -huh. In sorrow, thou shalt bring forth children, and, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Now, this is the consequences of them breaking the commandment. He's setting up the structure now on how things are going to be because originally that man wasn't over her like that. But because of sin, her punishment happened to be going through childbearing time. It's going to be hard and painful. That's why it's not good for you to be in the room when she's giving birth because you might get called out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some men can take it, some men can't. I mean, you know, there's a lot going on with childbirth. But... We'll get to you, my brother, when we get to the end, right? Go ahead and read, bro. What do you say? Verse 17. Uh -huh. And unto Adam he said, what? Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, uh -huh. and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. So he cursed the ground for his sake. But he said, Because he had eaten of the tree. A lot of people believe that was an apple. That he ate an apple. He ain't a fruit. He ain't an apple. Is that what people believe? I don't know. I, what I, have y'all? I said fruit. They said he ate the fruit, right? Yeah, he, he, ate a, he ate the tree of life, or whatever you call it. He, he ate, ate that apple. <laughs> but she ate, ate that, she ate that apple. Uh huh. She, she ate, ate that apple. She ate that apple. Did you read apple in the Bible? Fruit. See how we getting there? See how we've been misled. Yeah. 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 It didn't say nothing about that. Life. Even when we think fruit, what are we talking about? You think apple, no, but now. But it was drugs. It was who? Drugs. It was drugs. It was drugs. So we can't think on a spiritual level to see what he was talking about. Why do we have something called the fruit of the spirit? That's not any kind of physical fruit. We're talking spiritual here. Negativity into the spirit. Negativity from the drugs into the spirit. Well, it didn't have nothing to do with drugs. What it had to do was he gave a commandment and it wasn't followed through. Because the conversation, it was a conversation and you eat with your mind. That's why she, the book says she took it to her husband. She took what? The conversation that she heard to her husband. And that's how we operate today. When a woman wants to get something over in terms of you purchasing and spending your money, mm. she brings you a sweet conversation. <laughs> then all of a sudden the wallet just get loose in your pocket okay. you know like you know I'm gonna hold back on you you know I ain't gonna fix you no dinner you know and a, a lot of other things you know and then you start like in your mind you know hey uh, wait a minute that's all you want and she know how to woo her man and we like to be wooed we just like giving away our money <laughs> Go ahead, read, bro. Middle of 17. Go ahead. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, uh -huh. and sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Yes. Thorns also and thistles shall yeah. it bring forth to thee. Go ahead. And thou shalt eat the herb of the field. Go ahead, bro. In the spirit of thy face shalt thou eat bread uh -huh. till thou return unto the ground. Wait a minute. Read that part again. Till thou return unto the ground. So that's where they got to go back to? To the ground, huh? Keep on reading, finish that for, verse out, and then I'm going to write it down. For out of it was thou taken. So out of the ground was you taken. And what? For dust thou art. Dust you are. And unto dust shalt Amen. thou return. Dust you go back to the ground. The ground. Right? That's two. That's two. Mm -hmm. We just want to verify, because so we got to put somebody in heaven. Since everybody believes there's some heaven going on. And we're going to hear from Jesus himself on what he said about heaven and who going. Right? I know I'm going. What verse you have, my brother? Verse 20. Go ahead. And Adam called his wife's name Eve. Uh-huh. Before she was the mother of all. She, because, excuse me. Because she was the mother of all living. So Eve is the mother of everybody who's living. We all start from that source. Eve and Adam. Adam is the father of all the living. Right? So now, I'm confused. you confused. I thought God was. 
was what? He, He's our spiritual yeah. father. Right. Yeah. Spiritual we talking father. physical. We talking flesh. 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 Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. The, yeah. The Bible goes back from, it goes from some is spiritual, some is physical. That's right. Uh -huh. So Just like the food you eat. We eating right now, whether you know it or not. We eating spiritually, but we eating it with our mind. That's right. Right? We reading and it's going in your mind, but you're eating it. Same thing when you look at it from the physical perspective of it. You eat, but you need utensils or you can use your hands and feed yourself in the mouth. But the mouth ain't feeding the mind. The mind and the mouth is two different objects working to give you both sides of something that's spiritual and physical. And that's how the Lord shows us things. Let's go to the book of John, chapter 3. Let's get it from Jesus. Now, this is the New Testament for those New Testament Christians. Let's see what Jesus said. And he said he's a God that can't lie. Yeah, right. book, three. Genesis 3. And we're going to pick it up at verses 12 through 21. John, John 3. John 3. John 3. Okay. Yeah, it's towards the back of the book, uh, right after Luke. Right after Luke. John chapter 3. Now, let's see what Jesus said. A man will say anything. 508 is the page. I got a pen for you, brother. I'll pass it to him. I got one, thank you. You good? Yeah. All right, my brother. Anybody else need a pen? Uh, we're going to read John chapter 3, verses 12 through 21. 3, 12 through 31. 21. 21. 21. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so when we leave here today, everybody's going to realize if somebody was in the heaven that we can go to, all these flights that's flying around the world, when somebody see them up there? No. Yeah, if they're in heaven, you're supposed to see them. No, you, you see birds in heaven? That's the second, of course. The second heaven. That's where the planes be. That's where the birds be. And that's where a lot of us have been taught that that's where our relatives be. In the second heaven. I just say where the Father dwell, no man can go there. That's the third heaven. So if man can't go to the third, you're dealing with the second heaven. The first heaven is here on this earth. That's why the Lord say from That's one end of so heaven to the other end of heaven, he talking down here on this earth. But once you leave off this ground, yes, till you get to the firmament, which is the blue water we see up there, mm -hmm. all of that is the second heaven. I never knew that was that hard. So is everybody there? Yeah. So the Bible, yeah. the Bible just talks about three heavens. Head. Three heavens. We got three heavens, and that's another story. We're going to get that to y'all here today. See, that's why I say we go to churches, and we don't go there to learn nothing. One time. But if you go to Bible study, you're going to learn something. If it ain't nothing but not to come back no more because y'all reading too much book up in there, you ain't coming back. <laughs> oh, the lie, I got that to say. Uh, y'all there? All right, then, my brother, when you get that, go ahead and read. Let's see what Jesus say. Cause y'all, it should be red letter for those that have red letter Bibles. But if not, we know this is Jesus cause he gonna speak it. Go ahead, my brother. John chapter three, what he say? verse 12. If I have told you earthly things and ye believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? Now, when Jesus came down here, he was telling us all kind of things about what was happening on the earth. Earthly things. And they didn't believe him. He said, I even came into my own, and they didn't believe me. They hated me. So how are you going to believe me when I start telling you about all these heavenly things? Mm -hmm. Like y'all saying the Father. And he said, no man has never seen nor heard the Father at any time. But that, we'll get to you, bro. We'll get to you. I'm just saying. That's what he says, quoting the scripture. No man has seen or heard the Father at any time. But when you see the Father... You seeing me. Because I and the Father is one. They're on one accord. They think the same. Two separate entities. Just like the husband and the wife. They're two separate people. But they one. Right? 
Mm -hmm. My wife can say some stuff before I can even finish. And it's like, you read my mind now because I done been with you long enough. I know you. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> and that's true. Once you live with somebody that long, they get to know you. And you, like when you got a certain tone in your voice, you getting sick, aren't you? No, nah, I don't feel nothing. Look, I'm telling you, you getting sick. I done heard it before. So they have that understanding. That's why it's two. Two minds is better than one. Mm. Right? Read, brother. What did he say? And no man, verse 13, and no man have ascended up to heaven. So stop right there. So he say, what? How many men? And no man have no ascended man. up to heaven. Ain't all of us in here consider man, one man, man? He say, no one, no man, period, has what? Has ascended up to heaven. Ascending mean going up. Now, this is Jesus talking. That's Jesus, yeah. Now, how then we say yeah. somebody going up there and Jesus said, no man is going well, up there. My mama and their dad has been lying to me then. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you ain't the only one, bro. You're not the only one. Generation. We've all been lied to, bro. And, and the thing of it is, is once you do it for so long, you, you believe, believe it so yeah, much. And that's why they say, hard not your heart, your mind. Because I need to chip away at all them lies y'all been taught. Yeah. Amen. Cause we get defensive about that stuff. Telling me I ain't going to heaven. Big mama's in heaven. Yeah, big mama up there. Don't you tell me. I don't know why you just believe what you believe. I believe what I believe. No, the book Jesus just told you no man is going up there. So now you calling Jesus a liar? Mm -hmm. No. But he said we build up that wall of petition, and it's hard. And that's why he call them. He call them strongholds. See, you can have a lie so strong it's hard to break through it. See? Because you so much love a lie that you believe it. That's right. Yeah. Say big mama got her wings. She flying around. And that's what holds us bondage or captive. It's lies. Because we don't want to let the lie go. But he said the truth shall set you free. From what? The lies. But we don't want to be set free. For some reason. But we here today to just share with you that this truth can set you free if you just believe on him. He said he came, but nobody believed me. If I told you that you ain't going to heaven, y'all ain't going to believe me. If I tell you who want to go to heaven, y'all ain't going to believe me. See, that's the spiritual thing up there. Celestial versus terrestrial. Right? So go ahead, bro. What you got? After, after the you got it, bro. Okay, cool, bro. We'll just pick it up and jump on it. Okay. Go ahead. And no man have ascended up to heaven, mm -hmm. but he that cometh down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. So the Son of Man is where? In yeah. heaven. Because he was down here, right? Yes. And then he went back up there after he had risen. He went right back to where he came from. See, he originally came from there. Mm -hmm. We originally came from where? The, the ground. ground. The dust of the ground. So... How can we believe heavenly things when we don't even believe the earthly thing? Hmm. Makes sense, yes. Yeah. See that? <laughs> yeah. We born from the dirt, yet we won't believe that. But every time we bathe, I don't care how many times you bathe, you still going to be dirty. dirty. Still going to be dirty. <laughs> Get that white towel. It'll show you how clean you are. Then I'm getting back in but we just have to, like I say, let the words speak to us. And then he say, don't be just a hearer because it's speaking to you. Then be a doer. Start doing what I told you to do. No different than your parents at home. You're not running my house. You're going to do what I say and, and say as I do. huh? You want me to do what you're telling me to do? No, no, no. This is my house partner. Do as so, I say and do as you're told. See, that's how the story go in my house. Coming up, and we respect that. Yes, sir. Having the parent over us because that was guidance, and all he's doing here is trying to guide us to understanding how he operates. Go ahead, brother. So I'm just want to interject something because I know it's still hard for some some for some of us to believe what mm -hmm. we're reading here. So I'm just gonna read verse. I'm gonna read verse eleven. Yes. Right. Yeah. Verily, verily, I say unto thee. Go ahead. We speak that we do know, and 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 testify that we have seen, mm -hmm. and ye receive not our witness. See that? We just don't want to believe. Don't believe. 
So y'all not listening to our words. We read the Bible right. to you. Come on, man. Yeah. If, if y'all if y'all believe in, in the word of God and y'all believe in Christ himself, because these are Christ's words right. that we read, right? And we believe that this book is a lie. That's right. That it speaks to us. That's right. right? And it's the word and it's the word of God. That's right. right? Mm -hmm. So, and that's all we're doing. So if you disagree with what we're saying, you disagreeing with, with the word of God. Absolutely. So because he just told you. That verily he said unto us, we speak that we do know. We do know that we came from the ground. Mm -hmm. We do know that we going back to the ground because we see it at the cemetery. Like I said, I've never seen nobody go to the cemetery and say, oh, look at her going up there now. She's transitioning. <laughs> but they just putting her on down in the ground. Well, she transitioning for real because she's got to return back to the dirt. And when you look oh, at no. the body, it's just composed of different minerals. That's why we need stuff that grow out the ground to fix ourselves, whether it be medicine. Anything we need as humans got to come from the ground. Because we come from the ground. Dirt needs something from dirt. And I can vaguely remember being a kid. I made a lot of Mississippi mud pies and I ate them. Yes, sir. That dirt was delicious. It sure was. Red and nutrient. Yes, sir. <laughs> but it was healing, too. It was. So sometimes, you know, like I say, it may seem like it's strange, but he says it's no strange thing because you dirt. Dirt can eat dirt. It's just natural, right? Read on, my brother. Verse 14. What did he say? And Moses lifted up the, the serpent mm -hmm. in the wilderness. Even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. And it happened. Go ahead. <laughs> that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, uh -huh. but have eternal life. Mm. For God so loved the world yes. that he gave his only begotten son, uh -huh. that whosoever believeth in him yes. should not perish, right. but have everlasting life. Go ahead. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, That's right. but that the world through him might be saved. That's why he came, that he could save this world because this man had gone off the cliff. The very first thing he told us to do under a commandment was don't eat of the tree in the midst of the garden. Don't talk to that tree. Don't have conversation with it. Quick as he told them that, she, she ate, ate that. She ate that. She, she had, had that it. conversation, and that brought death on the creation because the breaking of the commandment, which is law, it brings death. That's death. So she brought death into the creation. So the Lord know he got to come down here now because wasn't no man clean enough to die for this creation. So the Lord had to give himself up and come down here and die for this man. Because we didn't like to follow instruction. And we have that today. Let somebody go buy a brand new car or a used car. How many of us, it's the first thing we do when we buy that car, we say we're going to go in the house, get this manual and read the manual so I can know about this car. And now... Um, that man will sit up there till a glove box turn cold. Because we don't want to do it. And then all of a sudden, when the car started acting crazy, we looking for the man. Like putting a bike together. We don't get the instruction and read it. We just start putting it together. Then say, I got an extra screw. Now I need to figure out where's the instruction. And that's working backwards. You're supposed to have that knowledge to do things before you start doing it. Like going across the street on a red light. You know oncoming traffic is coming. Why would you just walk across the street? When it's got an instruction up there saying walk, don't walk, and you walk anyway. That's because you're going against what's designed is to be a law to guide us and to keep us safe. Right? So read, brother. Let's get into it. Verse 18. Uh -huh. He that believeth on him is not condemned. That's right. But he that believeth not is condemned already. Go ahead. Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. That's right. Go ahead. And this is the condemnation that light is come into the world. Yes. And men love darkness rather than light. Y'all hear that? Yeah. We love darkness more than we love light. We love being at the club more than we love being at Bible study. We love being at that man white house more than we love being at Bible study, looking at that woman. And she got a husband. Well, if she don't, then you're fornicating. 
But we love doing those things as of darkness. That's why we like to get drunk in the dark. We don't like to be drunk all in the daytime when people see him. He was old, look at that old drunk. No, you want to do it under the darkness, uh, that cloak of darkness. Because can't nobody see what you're doing. But that light comes shining. You be like them roaches. When that light come on, them roaches start running on you. Mm -hmm. uh, they like that dog. Go ahead, bro. In the 19, because their deeds were evil. That's why. Go ahead. For everyone that doeth evil, hateth the light. Yeah, they do. Neither cometh to the light. They don't. Least, least his deeds should be reproved. That's right, because they don't want to be corrected. You know you can't be over there at Mr. Johnson's house and he just went to work and you over there trying to borrow some stuff out of his house. Yeah, you trying to borrow But you know his life. wife did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, my brother. And a, a real true servant of the Lord would wait till that man come home before he go over there. Or he'll have that confirmation. Hey, I need to drop something off. Well, go ahead. You can leave it there or my wife there. But you, you, you shouldn't be there long. You need to get out of there. So it's never no misunderstanding on what's going on. Get out there go to your own house. Mm -hmm. You want to lounge around and borrow stuff? Go to the store. <laughs> well, you got the store money. Well, then that means you don't need it. That's right. That's then you call that brother and you ask that brother if you can borrow on, something. Man. If he say, no, I'll go on over there my wife house. My wife said, no, nah, bro, I'll man. wait till you come home. You can wait. <laughs> you can wait. <laughs> Yeah, that, you know, I'm looking at you on the ring doorbell and you done been there three hours. Now, yeah, we got a problem, right? But uh, we can skip that next verse. Verse 21. What do you say, bro? But he that doeth, doeth truth cometh to the light. So you got to be doing truth to like the light. That's right. Go ahead. That his deeds may be made manifest. Yes, and that's what you want. Manifestation of good deeds. Like in here now, we're manifesting this word to you guys by the prophecy that he gave us through this book. And we're going through it to make sure y'all understand it. And when somebody passed by, well, what you got? We were in Bible study. Well, that's a good deed y'all did today. You're not out here getting caught up in some other stuff. Right now, you're spending time with the Lord and getting to know the Lord. But in truth, right? Not them lies that they got going on. Finish that, my brother. That they are wroth in God. They are wroth in God. All right, let's go to the next spot, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. But we see as it is in John, three, right? he said, no man is going to heaven. Yes, sir. That's number three. That's number three. No man can go to heaven, so that means you're going back down to the ground. 1 Thessalonians? Yes, 1 Thessalonians, First Thessalonians chapter 4. We're going to say the 5-7-8 So we're going to pick it up at verse 13. Yes, sir. Huh? There's a little bit at verse 20. See? First Thessalonians chapter, chapter four, four verses thirteen yes, through sir. eighteen. <laughs> and let us know when y'all there. Everybody getting it so far? Everybody there so far? Y'all yeah. following us, right? Y'all, y'all. Okay, we just want to make sure you're with us. First Thessalonians chapter four, verse thirteen. Everybody there? Yep. All right, then, my brother, go ahead and read that. Okay, verse thirteen. What do you say? But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, uh -huh. concerning them which are asleep. Go ahead. That ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. See how Paul is bringing this? He wouldn't have us to be ignorant. So if you're not ignorant, that means you got a little knowledge. He want us to have knowledge to understand what's about to happen. Because if this happened, you can't already be up there. See, this is going to knock down that being up in the air stuff. Go ahead, bro. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, yes. even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Uh-huh. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. Go ahead and read. That we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. So what he's saying in that is that you're going to have some of us still alive walking around when Christ returns. But we got some people that's in the grave already. Those that's in the grave won't be prevented from going up due to the fact that you still have those that's alive that's going to be caught up. We won't prevent them because we getting caught up. That's a lie. 
but we're not even going up first. They are. Go ahead and read, bro. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven. So he coming down. Descend. He coming down. The voice of the archangel. With that voice of the angel and what? And with a trump. And with that trump. Of God. Now, the reason I spoke to you guys early on was that the Lord commanded us to keep the feast days. Leviticus chapter 23. You'll find out one of the feasts that we keep is the Feast of Trumpet. Now, in the book of Revelation, seven trumpets going to sound. Yeah. And at that seven trump, those that's dead in Christ, which is 1 Thessalonians, they're going to rise up. And it says, in the, according to the scripture, and for so ever be with the Lord. But the Lord is descending, coming down. That's right. So where is he going if he's coming down? This is a big old earth. Where is the Lord going to when he comes on his way down here? Jerusalem. Come on now. <laughs> Make it plain. So when you read the book of Zechariah chapter 14, it tells you that in that day, on the Lord's day, his feet going to touch down on the Mount of Olives. That's where he left. Yeah. Here, going back up. He said, likewise, the son of man you see going up, likewise, you're going to see him come right back down here to the same spot on the Mount of Olives. Mm -hmm. So he was descending, coming down the Mount of Olives. And what he did was sound that trumpet and shout. And all those that's in the grave going to rise up, meet him in the air. But he's still heading to his place. And they just going right along with him. So everybody was going over to Jerusalem. See that how simple that is? When you don't get wild imaginations going and let the Bible speak for itself. Go ahead, bro. Uh, in the 16. And what he say? And the dead in Christ shall rise first. That's who's going to rise first, those that died in Christ first. Go ahead. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together uh -huh. with them in the clouds. So we're going to be caught up with them in the clouds. See, because he hadn't come down on the earth yet. He's descending. But he's coming from the other side of the, what we call firmament, the blue water up there. He's coming from way up there. And as he's coming down, we're going to meet him transitioning in the air. And then we're going straight on over to Jerusalem. That's all that's saying. Go ahead, brother. To meet the Lord in the air. Uh-huh. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. And from that day on, if he raised you up in the first resurrection, you're going to be with the Lord so on forever. Because when his kingdom ends, the father kingdoms begin. See, you got two kingdoms coming. Christ is going to reign on his father David's throne for the thousand year millennium. Then after that, you're going to have, right before he turned everything over to the father, you're going to have the judgment. See, people get it twisted like everybody's going to be judged. No, these people that sleep, they already got a spot. Yep. Those that get called up. And then those that's walking, that's alive amongst us, that get called up, you ain't going to have to be judged. You're going to become a judge yourself. Mm -hmm. You're going to get to judge the wicked. That's what that's all about right there. So that last thing he turned over is the judgment and death get swallowed up. Then he turned everything over to the Father. And that's New Jerusalem coming down out of heaven. What happened to the rest of the dead that and, don't rise up? And those that don't rise up in that second resurrection, which is the judgment, you going in the lake of fire. You're going to be burning material used to keep the fire in that lake hot with Satan and the crew. So that's why it's important for us now to get rid of all those lies because the Lord don't deal with lies. He said a liar will not inherit the kingdom. So you got to get that line out. You better start working on it. Because time, as they showed us in the movie, the kingdom of God is at hand. Why do you think they have people with signs on you showing you this? No, no, it ain't time yet. It's going to be a long time. They've just been saying that forever. Now, at some point, it's going to come true. And what you going to do when he come for you? Are you going to be ready? We supposed to be getting ready. It ain't going to be no excuses why you were not ready when he came. That's why he say when you was a child, you did childish things. But when you became a man, you put away those childish things and got your mind on this. To save yourself. 
Go ahead, bro. You do that. Verse 18. Go ahead. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Yes, sir. And that's what we're trying to do. Comfort you guys with some word, knowing that there's hope. Long as you're living and got breath, you can change. You can change, my brother. Let's go to another spot. Let's go to Luke real quick, chapter 1. And let's see where Jesus is going to be when he come out of that sky. <clears throat> Luke chapter 1. And we're going to pick that up at verse 26. Luke 1. You got you got you got to mark number 4 because the dead, oh, yeah, the, yeah. Dead, the, dead didn't, the dead didn't go to heaven. The dead didn't go to heaven. They just rose. They just They just met him in the air. That's right. But as my brother right there was saying, they was one, going to Jerusalem. There's only one person. Huh? There's only one person. One person what? You said, you said the dead is not going to heaven. So basically. Ain't nobody going to heaven. The only one person goes to the lake of fire. No. Nah, There's a whole lot of people. That lake of fire going to be full. Hell going to bust open. So, brother, <laughs> brother, can you explain what you, why, why you I think. I can explain the whole No, 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 no. Why, no. Why, you believe why, why, why you say. Because you said, he said only one person going to uh, to hell. Yeah. So where, where, did, where, did, where did we say that at? Right. No, now, if it's your own thoughts, that's okay. But I'm just trying to make sure that you didn't think we, we said, said that. No, no, no. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Yeah, All we right. didn't read that out. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, where we at, my brother? Uh, we uh, Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, verse 26. Uh-huh. Go ahead. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee uh -huh. named Nazareth. Yes. To a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph. Yes. Of the house of David. Uh-huh. And the virgin's name was Mary. Yes, sir. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored. Yes. And, and excuse me, hail thou that art highly favored. Yes. The Lord is with thee. Mm -hmm. Blessed art thou among women. Go ahead. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying mm -hmm. and cast in her mind what manner of salutation yes. this should be. Uh -huh. And the angel said unto her, Go ahead. Fear not, Mary, yes. for thou hast found favor with God. Uh -huh. And behold, Thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. Go ahead. He shall be great yes. and shall be called the son of the highest. Uh -huh. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Wait a minute. So he going to have the throne? To have a throne, that means you got a kingdom. Amen. And you got to be sitting on the throne to be the king. So, so it sounds like to me it says that he going to be called this Jesus, the son of the highest, and the Lord God himself, which is the father, is going to give him the throne of his fleshly father, David, right? Because that's the way we're looking at it in the flesh, right? Even though he was born not by a man, Mary was a virgin that just happened to have what we would look at today is like in vitro fertilization where no man had to have physical contact with that woman, but she had conception. It's almost that same process, but the angel implanted the seed. But he still had to have a father on earth. Mm -hmm. So David is the lineage he came under. And that was the promise from the beginning, that David, through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, would have this seed. And that's what we read in Genesis chapter two, I believe, or either three, uh, when it says that that serpent was going to bruise his heel. Right? Mm -hmm. We talking Jesus. Well, that had to be from the beginning all the way down because the Lord said, I call the beginning from the end or the end from the beginning. Right? So everything is already laid out on how he was going to come back and salvage this, this dead man here. Are we dead men walking with no hope? But he brought us hope and salvation through his blood and his death on the cross, right? So, we you at, Verse 33. Go ahead. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. Yes. And of his kingdom, there shall be no end. So this kingdom ain't going to be no end because it's going to transition from his kingdom to the father's kingdom. 
And that's what the book say. We ain't saying this. We reading this. Right? And we understand. We have understanding, right? Reading and comprehension. We're supposed to comprehend everything we're reading. Mm -hmm. And our job is to make sure that we all comprehend this because he said his word is the simplicity. It's so simple that we should be able to take it and teach it to a child. Mm -hmm. But you got to have a teacher who was sent. Mm -hmm. And a teacher whose line is not sent. A false prophet is not sent. But many of them come saying, Christ said this, Christ called me to do this, and Christ did that. And they be lying on Christ. Can't do the work without Christ. Well, the thing of it is, is that you got to know who's before you, whether that truly is a man of God or he's not. Because yeah. he said the one that he's seen is going to teach you and have knowledge in all things. Yeah. You got to get some knowledge, brother. Mm -hmm. And that's when you know you're dealing with Christ, person who sent. Because you start learning. Open up that knowledge. And that's what we're supposed to do. Go ahead, my brother, when you get ready. Uh, verse 34. What did he say? Then said Mary unto the angel, how shall this be, seeing I know not a man? See, how am I going to be pregnant and I don't even know a man? I ain't never slept with no man. Go ahead. And the angel answered and said unto her, What? The Holy Ghost shall come unto, upon thee. Uh-huh. And the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Yes. Therefore also mm -hmm. that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Now, Amen. and I say this just as well. We have it to where, how we just read that, that she said, I've never known no man. He said, well, then how can you believe the earthly things that I tell you? Like this. A lot of brothers don't believe that this can happen. That's right. But the Lord said, this is earthly stuff. I'm telling you, it happened. And you said, no, it didn't. That's right, brother. You need a man. Y'all got to have a man to have a baby. <laughs> that's right, brother. Yeah, that's true. And then the Lord showed you through in vitro fertilization that you can have a baby without a man. Mm -hmm. They have sperm on the banks. And you take that sperm to the bank and then that bank injects you with it. And then you become pregnant. Embryos, they save them and freeze them for later dates when they want to get their education and lifestyle together before they have children. See, you can do a lot of things that the Lord is letting you see without a man being physically involved with the woman. You don't need to make heat to make a baby. You just need the seed and the egg to make a baby. That's right, brother. All you need. And all you got to do is just pull them from both of them specimens and you can have that. That's why they had test tube babies back in the day. Sure. There wasn't no man involved. It was a test tube. But things can happen. Praise the Lord because he said he can, you can do all things through Christ Jesus. Amen. Right? Amen. So, Let's move on to the next one, brother, because we got to get through these scripts. Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14, my brother. Book of Isaiah chapter 14. Isaiah 14. Yes, man. And that one there just showed us again. That's another mark. <laughs> yeah, that's another mark, my brother. 337. 337. Now, Isaiah 14, we're going to pick it up at verse 12. Mm-hmm. So far, five going in the ground. Mm -hmm. Heaven is zero. Zero in heaven. We're going to find out who's going to heaven, though. It's in the Bible. <laughs> who want to go? <laughs> he ain't going, but he want to go. Isaiah chapter 14. If everybody there, you can go ahead and read, my brother. I'll pick okay. you up. Pick it yeah, up yeah. at verse 12. Uh -huh. how, art thou, how art thou fallen from heaven? Wait a minute. He fell from where? Heaven. heaven. So somebody did fall from heaven, huh? Yeah. And what? Oh, Lucifer. Oh, Lucifer. <laughs> go ahead. Son of the morning. Uh-huh. How art thou cut down to the ground? How are you cut to the ground? Go ahead. Which didst weaken the nation. He did. For thou hast said... In thine heart. What did he say? I will ascend into heaven. Wait a minute. Ascend mean he going up. Yes. Descend coming down. Ascend mean going up. He want to go on up there and be up yonder. Read on, brother. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. So he want to sit even above the stars of God. In mm -hmm. what? I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation. He want to sit on the mount of the congregation. 
That's us. We the congregation. He want to sit above that. Mm. But the only somebody who sit above the congregation is Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's his congregation. It's his church. Read on, brother. What did he say? In the size of the north, uh -huh. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. Oh, I'm going to be well above the heights of the clouds. And what? I will be like the most I'm high. I'm going to be just like the most high. See that? That's that talk that he want to be up there. But where is Satan at? Because he got cast down to the ground. He's under the chains of darkness right now. Well, he can't appear in front of us, but he's right down here with us. But he said he want to send back up to heaven. So this is the first somebody we see want to go to heaven. <laughs> we talking Lucifer. But he ain't Lucifer no more. He lost his name. Title. But also in that same same uh, well, to Satan, Satan is already well. In his in his terms, he admitted that yes. he wanted to be like the Most High, absolutely, because we know the Most High is in heaven. That's right, right. So he's trying to imitate the Most High God. That's right. Actually, Rush Bowen. No. He wants to ascend and sit on the top yeah. of the mountain. Well, he, you're right, my brother. He want mm -hmm. to rule. He want to rule over our rule. God. Right. Yes, <laughs> and that's his mission. But we understand he's a servant. He's a ministering spirit, which means he's a servant spirit. Mm -hmm. And the Lord created him. And that's why he asked him, how had thou fallen, old Lucifer? How did you get cut to the ground? We know because he told Michael to do it. Mm -hmm. Cut him down and kick him out of here, him and his boys that want to rule up here in my house. <clears throat> And you can't do that. But that's the first place we done read today of some entity wanting to go back up to heaven. Because see, originally he came from there. Yep. He never came out the ground. He originally came from heaven. So he wanted to go back home. That's his home coming or going. Because he already came. He's going back. Right. Can, can I lie? Go ahead, my brother? brother. Yes, so, sir. So this, this is real important because now we see where just like Satan misled Adam and Eve in the garden, right? right? He, he gave them a little bit of truth and a, and a, and a whole lot of lies. Right. Said, so you shall not surely die. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. You know? Because you will have knowledge of good and evil. That's right? right. So that's true. He told them that. Mm -hmm. You're going to have knowledge of good and evil, which they did because they realized they was naked, right? Absolutely. But... The lie came in is when he told them they wasn't going to die. That's right. right. Right? So now we know just like Adam and Eve was deceived, right? Mm -hmm. Think about us today. We got deceived. Everybody was deceived and thinking that we're going to heaven. That's right? Absolutely. So that's the exact same thing that yeah. Lucifer does, Come right? On he take this Bible and he twists it. That's right. right. That's he right. twists it, right? Come on now. So in order for us to come up out of that darkness and into the light, is we got to stop listening to what every, our mamas and our daddies and our grandparents told us, yeah, that's right? right? And we got to start reading this word for ourselves and get understanding, that's right? Because right? we got to come out of the darkness come and on, into man. the Make light, it plain. Make right? It plain, bro. And I know it's hard. That's it was right. hard for me, brother. Woo. It was hard for me, sister. All of us. <laughs> but it's that purging yes. every day. Don't believe what's put in front of my eyes like a three-card model, right? That's right. They right. shift it around like that. And you got to say, stop, lift that cup up, let me see. Okay, yeah. that's where it's at, right? Yeah. And that's what this book is about, opening in this book and not just going by what, what you been taught, what you didn't heard. Yes. Just like most of us go to church on Sundays, we listen to that preacher, he don't even open up the book. That's right. He got it, he's showing it. He's showing it, Can't but like he that. ain't reading it, yeah. right? So that's the only way we're going to come out of that darkness is by opening up this book mm -hmm. and asking the Lord to open up our understanding. Hey, praise the right? Lord, my brother. I'm sorry. Yeah, uh-uh, that's yeah, good that's stuff, stuff there, bro. Yeah. And the Lord works that way. See what I'm saying? There's yes. some things that I may not bring out that my brother's sitting here that he can see in the Lord to show him to say, hey, put this on the table. And that's how we operate as servants because we all are forever learning. Amen. This is learning. I'm in school just like he in school and y'all in school. You may have heard something that I haven't heard. But we reason. That's why he say, let us reason together about the word of God and make it make sense. Make it 
Right. Cause somebody can just tell you anything, but does it make sense? No. Amen. And that's the whole purpose of reading. And they telling us that reading is fun to the mental. They say fundamental, but it's fun to your mental because you have understanding when you read something and now you know how to apply. Because that's what we're supposed to do with these scriptures. Read it, get some understanding, and then apply it to your life. Right? That you may spiritually grow. Right? So with that, where we at, bro? Right, Revelation. We finished with that one. Okay, we, we do with that one there. So we found Satan. We want to go back up to heaven. All right, let's see. Is that we got another victim. Revelation what? Revelation, Revelation chapter 21, 21. verse 1. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Back of the book. Revelation 21. See, a lot of times they don't even like to go back here in Revelation. Oh, no. No, no. Yeah. This this end time book here, boy. They, oh, no, they don't want to know about the end time. Yeah. We not. Six. 21. And we're going to start with verses 1 through 8. Revelation 21, verses 1 through 8. It's on page 601. All right. When you get that, my brother, go ahead and read. Okay, verse 1. What did he say? And I saw a new heaven yes. and a new earth. Uh -huh. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. Go ahead. And there was no more sea. And no more sea. Go ahead. And I, John, saw the holy city, uh -huh. New Jerusalem. New Jerusalem. Coming down from God. Coming down. So that means it was up in heaven. But it was coming down. But now remember, this is a vision that John saw. Right? They allowed him to see it. So he can give it to us so we can understand what it meant in the latter days. Because we, even though we have great parents, grandparents, and great, great, great grandparents, they always talked about going in the kingdom and it's got the pearly gates and the streets made of gold. And, over the yeah, they had all of this lined out. But they didn't have it with the right perspective and understanding. Mm. So now we're going to make sure we have understanding on what it's talking about, right? Go ahead, brother. Coming down from God out of heaven, uh -huh. prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Go ahead. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, what? Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. All right, go ahead. And he will dwell with them. Uh -huh. And they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them. Go ahead. And be their God. Go ahead. And God shall wipe away all tears from, uh -huh. from their eyes. Yes. And there shall be no more death, uh -huh. neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. None of that. How would you like to wake up and it just ain't none of that going on no more? No sorrow, more. no pain. Oh, my. Wake up and your hip is just hurting. Ain't none of that going on no more. That's a wonderful thing. Because I was waking up out the bed and took a step and something popped. And I didn't like the sound of it. But that's coming along with old age because the body is dying every day. And we have to get used to that. But he said, but when this kingdom comes, it's none of that no more. He going to do all these things and put it in place that he can give it to the Father. Right? Go ahead, brother. What do he say? For the former things are passed away. And they have. And, and he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he will. Go ahead. And he said unto me, What? Right. For these words are true and faithful. They true and faithful. faithful. That is going to happen. Go ahead. And he said unto me, What did he say? It is done. It is done. I am Alpha and Omega. Go ahead. The beginning and the end. Yeah. I will give unto him. That is a thirst yes. of the fountain of the water of, of life freely. Yes, sir. That's that six? No, okay. Uh, Go ahead. Seven, I'm at seven. Go ahead. He that, he that overcometh shall inherit all things. Yes. And I will be his God and he shall be my son. Yes, sir. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers mm -hmm. and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters Woo! and all liars. Wait a shall, minute, not the liars. Uh, and all liars. All liars too, huh? Mm -hmm. Is what? Shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. So when they telling you you're going on up there to be with Jesus, you're going to be in the kingdom and all this. No, he just said that. Liars, whoremongers, mm -hmm. all these different attributes that's ungodly. He got a place for that, and it's called the lake of fire. Mm. And, to, and to, to give you a, a representation of what that's like, go to a volcano and see that lava. 
Mm-hmm. You can't even get close to it. That heat is so tremendous. Mm-hmm. It's like having something like that going. And you just going to jump right on in there. And you're going to be alive for the rest of your life. Which is eternity. But you're going to be in the fire. And you can't die. And worms going to be in there eating on you. And you're going to feel them. Mm-hmm. See, they don't like to read this kind of stuff. So you can turn away from doing what you've been doing. So that this don't happen to you. Because the Lord said it's going to happen. He's going to put you in that lake. And, and a lot of us have been led to believe that Jesus just loves everybody. He just love everything you're doing. Everybody's a child of God. Well, he's going to have some children in that lake. He's going to love you to death. <laughs> Eternal death. He's going to love you to death. You're going to the barbecue. <laughs> so it is what it is. Read on, my brother. Which is the second death. Oh, wait a minute. What death is this? The second, second death. death. So that's a first death? Yeah. And then there's a second death? Yes, sir. Yes. See, the first death Adam gave to us in Eve by disobedience. But it was brought on because Adam was in charge, right? So actually, it's Adam that brought on the first death. Where he said, the day that you eat of this tree, you shall surely die. Well, when he had that conversation, he ate of that tree. So the first death we have, because we, we see people in the cemetery. But he said, this is the second death. Hmm. Do they talk about this in church? No. The second death? It's a reason why. Go ahead, bro. Verse 10. What did he say? No, no, skip. Yeah, uh, on, yeah, yeah skip on skip, down. Skip verse 10. 10. Go ahead. Yep. And he carried me away in the spirit uh-huh. to a great and high mountain. It what? And showed me the great city. Uh-huh. Excuse, excuse me. The holy, the holy Jerusalem. Descending out of heaven from God. Wait a minute. So we got a Jerusalem that's already over there right now in Israel. But then he said this Jerusalem was coming down out of the sky. Out of heaven. That's right. So it's two Jerusalems then, huh? How about that? Because so is above, so is below. See, he was just trying to show us a mirror image of what's to come. See, in this Jerusalem here, it's new. And it ain't going to have all that foul iniquity running loose up in it. Mm-hmm. And we all going to be transformed into spiritual beings. It won't be no more flesh and blood on this planet. That's why they circumcised on the eighth day. That was your token to show the Lord that you understood that on the eighth day, it won't be no more flesh and blood. But how many of us have read the Bible and saw it said the eighth day inside of there? Y'all ever seen the eighth day in the Bible? Uh, it says it. Is it Read that in the book of Leviticus. Uh-huh. It's in there. The eighth day. The eighth day. That's the Father Kingdom coming down on the eighth day. Go ahead, bro. Verse eleven. What he say? Having the glory of God. Uh huh. And her light was like unto a stone. Uh huh. Most precious. Yes. Even like a jasper stone. Uh huh. Clear as crystal. Go ahead. And had a wall great and high. Uh mm-hmm. huh. And had twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, uh-huh. and the names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. That's what's going to be on that new Jerusalem coming down. The twelve tribes of the children of Israel. Mm. Skipping the twenty. Go ahead. Skipping the twenty-two. Verse twenty-two. What he say? And I saw no temple therein. Uh huh. For the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. Go ahead. And the city had no need of the of the sun, uh-huh. neither of the moon. Look at that. Now, we're going to get to a point to where we're not going to need the sun nor the moon anymore. Mm-hmm. That means when this starts happening, you're getting ready that it's not going to be any flesh and blood on this planet. Because we got to have sun and we need the moon for certain things as well. And when we don't have that, brother, we're in a whole different other world. He said, the old, the former had passed away. And this is the introduction to the new. Go ahead, bro. To shine in it. Uh-huh. For the glory of God did lighten it. He did. Go ahead. And the lamb is the light thereof. And the lamb is the light thereof, but the glory of the Father lit up that temple. Yeah. And that's why we didn't have no need for the sun no more, because he told Moses, when he passed by, he said, let me hide you in the rocks of this cliff. And when I pass by, I'm going to put my hand in front of you because to look upon me, my glory will kill you. But Moses took on that, right? Because when Moses stood around them 40 
days with the God of Israel, he started transforming. And when he came down and them people was doing all that wickedness, Moses was in light. And they said, hey, who is that guy? Put the veil back over your head. Partner, that's too much light going on. And we trying to party down here like we're in a club. Because that was that darkness against the light. And every time Moses went to speak with God, he took the veil off his head because that was light with light. But when he went around the people, he had to put the veil on. It was too much light and truth for them people to handle. Let's go on to the next one, my brother. Verse 24. Go ahead. And the nations of them which are saved what? shall walk in the light yes. of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And look what he said. Nations with the nest. He came in. So there's other nations that's going to allow to be in the kings. So if you hear somebody teaching that it's only for Israel, read them that. Nations with the nest. More. He's not a vain God. We almost said, my brother, he's not that's vain. Why, that's why there was, was a large, large number of nations at Pentecost during the Holy now, Spirit's coming down. No, no, no. In Pentecost, it says that it was only Israel there. Now, what happened was, just like now, you can have Israel yeah, scattered, scattered into all nations, right, right. right? And they got those nations' tongues. Right. But now, That's they right. knew, because they was the only one dealing with the word of God, that they came back. They knew all males had to come back for Pentecost. So when they set in Pentecost, right. they started speaking in their own tongues that they knew. But the angel translated those tongues. So he said, are not these the men of Galilee that we hear in our own tongues? Right. He was able to make them understand. Just like you now have access to have somebody speaking to you in Spanish. If you don't know Spanish, and then you pull out your Google Translate. Yeah. And it translate what he said in English to you so you can understand what was being said. But those was all Hebrews at Pentecost because the other nations hadn't gotten to know God like that just yet. Uh, go ahead, my brother. We're going to, uh, we only got a few more scriptures. Uh, Acts chapter 2. And let me get the time because we want to make sure. They say as long as y'all get there before 1230, y'all straight. 1235. You know what? Let me find a good script that we can end this on. Let's see two more scripts and then I'll turn y'all out. Let's go to numbers. No, let's go to numbers. numbers. Yeah. Numbers? Yeah, because yeah. we got to put oh, this on God. Oh, mark that. Oh, yeah, number six. Mark that number six. And then we had number two uh, coming out of Revelation. That's the only thing coming out the sky. Right. Yeah. It's New Jerusalem. Numbers what? Numbers chapter 23, <coughs> verse 19. Numbers 23, verse 19. Go ahead. Everybody's there? Okay. Numbers chapter 23, uh -huh. verse 19. What did he say? God is not a man uh -huh. that he should lie. Yes. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Uh -huh. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Uh -huh. Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Uh huh. So we see that it says God is not a man that he should lie. So everything we're reading that come out this scripture, mm -hmm. nobody's going to heaven. Right. Everybody going to that to that cemetery. Mm -hmm. You going there. Now, let's hit Job real quick. Job 27. Job 27. Because let Job, let Job explain. Yeah. Let's see what Job had to say. And if we understand what Job is saying. Job 27. We're going to pick it up at verses number one. Okay. All right. Job 27 and one. What the book say, my brother? Moreover, Job continued in his parable and said, What did he say? As God liveth, yes. who hath taken away my judgment, uh -huh. and the Almighty, who hath vexed my soul. Go ahead and read. 
All the while my breath is in me. All the while my breath is in me. And the spirit of God is in my and nostrils. the spirit of God, which is that breath, like he did in Adam at the beginning. He breathed that breath of life in his nostril. Mm -hmm. My lips shall not speak wickedness. That's right. Go ahead. Nor my tongue utter deceit. Go ahead. God forbid that I should justify you. Uh -huh. Till I die, I will not remove mine integrity from me. So, all the while he got breath in him, he says he's living. Right? Mm -hmm. But he says at the same time, though, if you took that breath from him, he said, hey, God forbid, I should justify you till I die. Right. Why didn't he say until I just gone on to heaven? He said, till I die. We know what we do with people that die. We take them right to the cemetery. Mm -hmm. right. Because you got to have a homecoming. Unless you go to one of those places where they're going to actually do the burning of the body. You know what I mean? Because some people go on off to the place to get that done. The mortuary. Mm -hmm. And say, hey, you know, put the incineration on this guy because he wants to be, you know, disposed of that way. And ain't nothing wrong with that because the Lord said if you was born, he going to call you back. Regardless. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And then if you died in the rivers or the seas, he going to call you up out of there. That's right. He say to the yeah. seas, give up my sons and daughters. Mm -hmm. They got to give them up. Right? Mm -hmm. Here the Ecclesiastes, my brother, let's call this a rap. Because uh, that Job was another one, right? He said, while well, his breath is in him until he die. That's right. He ain't say going to heaven. Lucky ain't nobody going to heaven yet. Ecclesiastes 12. 329. <clears throat> 329. Verses, verses 5 through 8. Verses 5 through 8. That's three verses. All right, y'all there? All right, y'all. Also, when they shall be afraid of that which is high, mm -hmm. and fears shall be in the way, yes, and the almond trees shall flourish, uh -huh. and the grasshopper shall be a burden, uh -huh. and desire shall fail. And what? Because man goeth to his long home. Wait, man going to his home, his long home. His, he's longing for this home. Where he gonna have? And the mourners go about the streets. So when they get, when we go to the funeral, don't we see the man going to his homecoming, and then the mourners just crying and weeping? Oh, Willie, I'm gonna miss you, Willie. Oh, he was so wonderful. He was my best nephew. Oh, Willie, Willie, Willie. Yeah. They mourn. Yeah. Go ahead. Or ever the silver cord be loosed. Uh huh. Or the golden bowl be broken. Go ahead. Or the pitcher be broken at the fountain. Uh huh. Or the wheel broken at the cistern. Yes. Then shall the dust return to the earth what as it was. It? The dust got to return where? To the, to the earth. earth. From dust you are, and dust you shall return. Did he just confirm that when we read in Genesis? That's right. Yes. You got to go back to that ground. Return. Ain't no looking up in the sky for that pocket. Mm -mm. None of that. You're supposed to be looking down. Mm -hmm. And some people say, oh, this is for my dead homie. And pour some whiskey or something down on the ground as he's going in the ground. And they'll see nobody standing there just throwing whiskey up in the air. Mm -hmm. That ain't how you celebrate nobody life to begin with. No way. Why would you want to have a drink for your homie and your homie gone down? And the Lord say rejoice when somebody die. Because he don't have the cares of the world no more. He's free from that. Right. And we look forward to if he walked his life right with Christ, we're going to see him again. We should rejoice knowing that we're going to see our brother or sister again. Now, that's what we're supposed to take joy in. Not pouring whiskey out and stuff like that. Where you at, bro? Uh, middle of seven. Go ahead. And the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. Oh, so that breath he blew in your nostril, that goes back to God, the breath. But you going in the ground. Mm -hmm. And that's why they say that's the last thing he took. I was there with him when he took his last that's breath. Right, yeah. Why? Because it had to go back to who gave it. Mm -hmm. But that breath still is spirit because it came out of God. Mm -hmm. And it just gives us mobility. Dirt that has mobility that can make more dirt. Re dirt reproducing dirt. But mm -hmm. With God intention to become what God intended for us to be from the beginning. 
He gave us the will to become God. That's why he created us. He said, I created man in my image. Everything on imagery that the Lord has, we have. Only thing he didn't give us is power. Because we know what <coughs> we'll do. We'll go right to the bank. <coughs> I'm going to walk through the wall and get all this money. Because that's where our mindset is, right? It's not like Christ's mindset. We're supposed to renew our mind just like Christ. Mm -hmm. We don't think of these things that's down here that's monetary and don't last long. Final verse. Final verse. And let's Eight. close that out. Vanity of vanities. Vanity the, is what it is. Said the preacher. Said the preacher. All is vanity. All is vanity. vanity. Mm. Everything we do. Even when you go in the morning to brush your teeth and wash your face, you look at yourself in the mirror talking about, uh, I'm looking pretty good today. That's vanity. If you think you something and you're not, it's vanity. All is vanity. Solomon had the wisdom to say that as well. Yeah. Right? So with that, my brother, I hope y'all was able to get something out of that. Yeah. Now, he's going to close us out with the scriptures so you guys can get out there and go get something to eat. And we are trying to see uh, those that have been coming to the class, if y'all want to get baptized, we're going to step away from the building itself, and we're going to do some baptismals uh, if you guys want to have that done. And we'll have to get it scheduled. But go ahead and close us out, my brother. We'll talk about that. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, uh -huh. our Father which uh -huh. art in heaven. Our Father which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth. Thy will be done in earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us of our debts. And forgive us of our debts. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the King. And the power and the power and the glory and the glory forever. forever. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord God Praise of Israel. Lord. Praise the Lord God of Israel. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Y'all, my brothers, and I hope y'all can get time down there. Uh, by the Lord's hand, he'll hold you. Thanks, sir. Well, y'all get y'all something to eat. Mm -hmm. So uh, if y'all had any questions. We here. I gotta have these shoes. We here. <laughs> you like the shoes? Yeah, I got any questions. I'm gonna try to look for something. You're gonna be back. I'm gonna try to buy you a pair, right? But in the truth, see, <laughs> the church was baptized. Huh?